Hey everybody, how's it going? Jen is on here. So I want to make this video talking about the importance of Union Level 30 and why I recommend trying to actually get here as soon as you possibly can. When you get to Union Level 30, a lot of the end game opens up, but more importantly, your account becomes a lot more efficient. Now, I'm sure a lot of players who have played games like Genshin in the past know that upping the world level of your account is important, but there's a lot more in this game that a lot of people might not realize, especially relating to the ecosystem. So in this video, I want to talk about how did I reach level 30 so quickly, what are some of the efficiencies, and some cool tips about the ecosystem and things that people may have missed. Also, if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel, because I'll be making a lot of Wuthering Waves content in the near future. So first of all, how did I hit level 30? Well, I did about a 20 hour stream and kind of just binge played like an animal, but there are people that have gone all the way up to level 35. So clearly I'm not as much of a crazy person as them. So the basics are do all of the main story quest, obviously, and do as many of the side quests as possible that you can. You get all this union XP just from doing all this stuff. It's probably the bulk of the union XP you'll get to level up, but also keep in mind, your dailies are giving you a ton. I mean, the max thing is getting 600, that's 400, 400. It adds up so much. You're going to hit level 30 over time automatically. But also, all these little things in the guidebook gives you a lot of nice XP. Obviously, people want the asteroid to try and pull characters, but all this union XP is really adding up. Try to complete them as you can. But also, really importantly, obviously the map gives you a ton of completion. Notice my exploration is not really that good in most of these places though. So this means you don't really have to do an amazing job of exploration to hit level 30. Kind of just have to do a bunch of different things. Now notice I also even missed some of the teleporters and hey, they give you a lot of XP as well. Also keep in mind, the first time you kill these bosses, they actually give you a big boost of XP as well. You don't even have to pick up the drops that they leave behind or anything and waste any of your wave plates. Just kill them once and you get some nice bonus XP. So I highly recommend it. So what's the first obvious thing that you get out of reaching Union level 30? Well, now when you kill these bosses, they drop more. And this is the same thing as in Genshin. So instead of dropping one to two of these, now they will drop two to three. So obviously you've been a lot more efficient for every single point of wave plates that you're using. And when you're doing all this other content is more efficient as well. So when you're doing these tacit fields, now you can farm stuff like premium tuners and all that. And also when you're doing forgery challenges, now you get better upgrade materials for your character's skills. So everything's more efficient energy-wise the sooner you get to a higher world level. But here's where things become a little more interesting, the data bank. A lot of people don't really pay much attention to the data bank. They do kill enemies and they pick up the echoes, which levels this, but a lot of people don't realize how important it is, especially later on. So let's look at level 13 right here. When you look at this, you have a 75% chance of getting a four-star echo and a 25% for a three-star. Okay. Then you get to level 14, 75, 25. Okay. Then you get to 15, 30, 70, and these are five star echoes. You cannot reach level 15 in this until you've hit level 30 union level. So you have to do them in tandem. You need to kill tons of enemies, pick up all their echoes, and you also need to level your account. Now, I kind of recommend a scorched earth policy where essentially kill every single enemy that you see and pick up their echo. And I'm sure a lot of people are doing that already because the combat's actually really fun and enjoyable and people just like picking up loot. But the moment you hit level 15, you're now able to farm the best type of gear in Wuthering Waves, the five stars. These are what you're gonna be using into the end game and forever on all of your characters. Not only that, but they also have better main stats and they get an extra substat roll. Now, if you have been upgrading up the four stars, don't feel too bad because you actually can feed them into the five stars, but at diminishing returns, but it's still not really that bad. But I think what I've noticed is a lot of people haven't been leveling up their echoes. They've just kind of been holding on to them. Well, the moment you get to this point, this is when you start to be like, okay, now is the time to use all those resources I've been saving for the entire game, and it's time to spam upgrade echoes. Now, the characters I used to clear the story were just, I used some of the main character, used some Verena and Jianshin and Jian, right? Pretty simple stuff. I was using a couple purples on them, some blues, just trying to finish off the sets. Well, now I'm starting to get some better items. Jian knows he's using a few golds. This character, look, I have a boss echo with crit damage. And you might think, wow, that's so crazy. But once you start being able to drop 
the gold echoes, you'll realize how easy it is to farm some of the bosses for them and some of the other monsters. And also you can hop to friends worlds to farm their monsters or with them, which gets pretty crazy because you'll have tons and tons and tons of echoes, right? But here's what's really interesting. A lot of people don't realize this final tab it even exists. And how it works is you can put echoes in here, up to five of them, and then or hit auto select, and then you merge them. And based on the level of your data bank, it will give you an echo. So if you have the 30% gold, 70 purple, and you feed five crap echoes, they don't have to be gold, they don't have to be purple, they could be green or blue echoes. Those are the odds of you getting a gold or a purple. So if I had five just garbage blue echoes here and I fed them all in, there would be a 30% chance I get a gold. That means all of the enemies that you've been killing the entire game are actually valuable. When you were level five killing trash mobs, those echoes that you're never gonna use can be fed to potentially make golds. Also, as you're just spam feeding things in here, which you will do, you're just gonna be leveling up your echo collection process, progress. Um, now, I will say, I recommend getting to level 15 before you start really spam feeding them in because you have the chance to get golds, but sometimes people will start to do it at level 14 to try and push themselves over the edge into level 15. But this is incredibly useful. It means you can just spam kill and farm anything in the game and you'll actually be able to merge it and potentially get good gear. And I got some pretty decent stuff from this as well. So that's a really important feature that I think a lot of people either don't know about at all or is kind of underrated because that means you haven't been wasting your progress the whole game. Now, the moment you get to level 30 for union level, now you're able to get some pretty good drops from those enemies. You have a level 15 data bank, you're the right level, you're getting higher drops from all the bosses and all of the little domains, the forgery things that you're running, and now the monsters have a 30% chance that when they drop an echo, it's gold. So now farming feels more efficient and you feel like you, there's actually real reasons to kill all these enemies that you're coming across. Because even if you're not building a character right now or it drops some garbage echo, you can just feed that into the grinder and get something really good. And also, something really interesting about these Echoes on Gion that a lot of people don't realize, but I was clued into by a viewer. So, notice this. I have a Hu Chief Arrow Damage bonus on Arrow Damage set. Now, that's not really easy to get. Now, notice I have a second one as well. Arrow Damage bonus, Arrow Damage. Huh. Wow, I must be really lucky, right? No, not quite. There's actually a deterministic way per month to get some of these. Now, if you go to the Elusive Realm here and you go down here into the shop, you won't be able to see it on mine because I already bought them and for some reason it doesn't show stuff that you already bought. But looking at this, which by the way, Steparu is the one who made this little chart and it's very helpful, so props to him. But you will be able to select two echoes and they cost a little bit of currency, but you get these malleable elite class echoes for the three star type echo enemies, the elite mobs, right? And there's echo one, echo two. These are deterministic. So you see the Hu Chief that I grabbed and that car that I grabbed, they're both arrow. Their arrow main stat and their arrow set. This, for instance, is a Glacio main stat, Glacio set. So a lot of the mobs will have two potential elements that they could be. Well, they don't have that for this. This is deterministic and it doesn't tell you on the items. So you might grab it not realizing that it's not random. It's always going to be like this. Also, they also have two dread mains right here. One is Havoc, one is Fusion. So the Echo 1 will always be the Havoc one. The Echo 2 will always be the Fusion one. So it's really confusing and it's badly explained. Actually, it's not explained at all, which is a bit of a problem. So please keep this in mind when you grab them. But the moment you get them, you're going to get a giant power boost because not only are they just perfect stats for you, but also the main stat is absolutely insane. And the power boost I got going from just some crappy purple upgrades to just maxing these out, mostly for the main stat, but hopefully good substats as well. And this really adds up. Suddenly I was able to kill mobs that I just had no chance of before, that I felt like I was so weak against. Like if you just look at the map right over here and you fight an enemy like Tempest Mephis, which is probably one of the hardest bosses in the game overall, I was not even really getting hit by the boss, and I was parrying it a ton, but I just couldn't kill it. 
I just literally did not meet the DPS requirement to kill it. Even doing almost everything perfectly, it still had like 30% of its health left. The moment I put those echoes on, suddenly my Geon is shredding the boss, and I feel so strong. This is the power of actually having upgraded gear, going from essentially nothing to upgraded gear, because you want to be careful and not really waste resources, right? Something like Tower of Adversity, I haven't even gone there in a while, but I'm probably going to absolutely shred it now that I actually am able to build my characters. So this is where the end game really opens up. Some of the challenging stuff you may have gone stuck on, even when you had purple echoes, well, now you can start to replace that with better gear, and you can even deterministically get a bit of that gear, and you can start really grinding in Wuthering Waves. So anyways, I just really want to talk about these because I think they're all really important things to understand and realize that level 30 is a much bigger boost than people realize, not only for upgrading the character's levels and their weapons, but also just the fact that the ecosystem becomes so much more in-depth and you're able to get such more efficient gearing out of it. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like or subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you next time.